Hey nerdy knitters, Tanya here. It's time for another monthly knit and chat, so I hope you have your knitting and your favorite drink and you're settled in to have a good chat with me. Now it is summertime and I thought we'd just relax and do something not so technical about like swatching and gauge and math for fitting and all of that stuff. So instead, I thought we would just chat about some of the favorite podcasts and YouTube channels that I watch and maybe you'll find a few new to you that you want to add to your list as well. And if you're like me, you probably already subscribe to a bunch of different knitting channels, podcasts or technique videos. There's just so much on YouTube for knitters. But I think it sort of falls into two categories. Like sometimes if I'm designing or researching a new technique or practicing something that I need to refresh my memory, because sometimes, you know, you don't do things often enough to make it really stick and you have to like go back and watch something to get it back in your head. I still have to do that too. And when I do that, when I need to do that, I usually like maybe do a Google search or more often I head right to YouTube because I like to see a video of like the technique. So sometimes that's what I'm doing. I am heading to YouTube to look up a specific technique to see how it should be done. And I usually watch more than one video to make sure I really have a good understanding of it. But there are a few channels that I go to when I have a specific technique I'm looking for. Those channels, in no particular order, would be Norman at Nimble Needles. His videos are very detailed and technical and I really appreciate all of the effort and thought he puts into his technique videos. Or I head to Suzanne Bryan's YouTube channel. She is a master hand knitter and very detail and technical oriented, technically oriented. And another master hand knitter that I would also check out for technique videos is Roxanne Richardson. Hers too. She, I love the way she thinks and processes through and um, explains how techniques should be done, but also why they're done that way. Hers are really good for that. And then for really clear tutorials as well, Very Pink Knits has a lot of great ones. And she's been on YouTube for a long time and lots of really great technique videos. So generally when I'm looking at techniques, I might just do a general search and search out whatever videos are out there. But then I usually go to one of those four sources as well and see if they have a video on that topic. Because anybody can post a video to YouTube and that doesn't make the information correct or like if there is a certain way to do a technique and you want it done in that certain way, there could be lots of like tricks or tips to make it neater or, you know, or change it. Like there's lots of ways to um, change an SSK so it's neater, but the actual SSK means you still have to slip two stitches knit-wise one at a time and then knit them th through the back loops. If you slip the second stitch purl-wise, it's, I mean, it's still technically probably an SSK, but you couldn't do that like say if you're going to do the master hand knitting program they wouldn't allow they wouldn't accept that swatch they want you to actually do an ssk so like things like that like um knowing the difference between how something should be done like according to the rules of knitting or ways to neaten things up where you might like bend or break a little rule so as long as you know the difference you know so that's my one caveat that's why i like to look at those four channels in particular because i know that they're they can explain like this is the proper way to do it but if you wanted to change it to make it neater or something then you could do these types of things so i mean all those videos have their place but the other category of videos i guess on youtube would be things like this video you're not going to like search out this video to learn about a new technique but you're watching it because you're probably knitting you're relaxing and you want to watch some knitting related content while you're knitting and relaxing so you're not searching out technique videos probably maybe you are but you're just looking for somebody to sit and knit with when you so that's things like knitting podcasts or videos like this or other types of videos as well where you're just chatting about various knitting topics so I figure those are sort of the two broad categories and some knitters might just go on YouTube just to search a new technique and never actually sit down and hang out and chat with podcasters or people who produce videos like this. And then other knitters, probably if you're watching this, you're the other knitter who wants to sit and talk about knitting or hear somebody talk about knitting while they're working on their knitting project. So we're going to focus more on that second category, 
in my list today. I did already share like the few channels I check out when I'm looking at techniques, but when I want to just sit with my knitting, like on a sunny weekend and I want to sit in my backyard and I want to have my knitting project and just watch some interesting knitting content, then usually one of these channels is something I'm watching. Now I'm subscribed to a lot more and I watch a lot more than the ones I'm going to share today, but these are probably the ones like if they post a new video, it's right at the top of my queue. Like I know I want to watch that right away. So I am just want to give that caveat that of course there's more, but these are probably the ones I watch the most or the most frequently. So the first one would be fruity knitting. And this is one that whenever they post a new video, it's right at the top of my queue because I know when I have time to sit for an hour and a half, then I, cause I do like to sit and watch that one all in one go. Then that's one that's right at the top of my list. And it is two nice ladies, a mom and her daughter, Andrea and Madeline. They live in Germany. They're not German. They're from Australia, I believe, or maybe New Zealand. No, I think it's Australia. Um, it used to be Andrea and her husband, but he sadly passed away a few years ago, but now her daughter has sort of helped with the, um, creation of their show. I don't even want to call it a podcast because it's more of like a whole video show. I mean, it's a lot about knitting, but they have so much variety and it's just such a good show that it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. And there'll be links for all of these videos or channels down below if, if you, they're new to you and you want to check them out. This one I definitely highly recommend and it's actually one, if I have nothing else I want to watch, I might go and watch one of the old videos that I've actually, I've seen them all, I've watched every single one, but they're just so filled with really great content that they're worth a rewatch as well. Now they do have like the knitting content, like they share the knitting projects they're, they're working on. Madeline is um, not as experienced as her mom, Andrea is very experienced and she's done, um, well, you just have to go watch. She has, uh, I really like the things that she chooses to knit and she shares a lot about how she fits them to her shape and tackles really some big projects. Like she's done a few of the Alice Starmore designs from her Tudor Roses book, which is what I would call something like, I mean, they're just like master level knitting projects and they're on my someday list when I'm ready to tackle an Alice Starmore design. But those kinds of projects are definitely not like beginner friendly. They're for somebody who's very experienced and advanced and she's knit two of them. So that tells you like her level of knitting expertise. And she's very good at explaining like how she might adjust things for her shape, which I also like. I mean, we're definitely not the same shape, but I like to hear how other knitters are making adjustments for their body type. It's always interesting and you can always like learn something new that you can add to your own sort of knitting toolbox. So that is like they, they publish like a video or maybe twice a month. They're 90 minutes long and they have those little podcasty segments where they're talking about like their their uh, projects that they're working on and the things that they finished. But then the rest of the show is usually interviews and very in-depth. Andrea is very good at interviewing people and getting them to talk about their um, design aesthetic or their design process. So she interviews designers as well as yarn manufacturers or even sort of not, not necessarily knitting related, but just sort of cultural interest that a lot of knitters would also have. They would be interested in other cultural things, um, a lot of travel things and a lot of like little vloggy bits where she shows the countryside or knitting in the wild and just so many interesting things to watch and listen to. And she loves classical music. So there's a lot of that in the videos as well. So it's just sort of a like a magazine, a video magazine, I guess. It's just filled with so many interesting things to watch and to listen to. So definitely highly recommend Fruity Knitting. The next is the Crimson Stitchery. Now this is hosted by Anushka. She lives in London. She's currently working on her PhD. So she's sort of like slowed down her video um, release schedule because of that. Totally understandable. I can't imagine trying to work on a PhD and also create content for YouTube. But she has sort of the, well, the knitting podcasts where she talks about her projects and she designs as well. And I like hearing about her design process. She likes to 
pick a theme and then create sort of a collection around that theme like she did one on herbal remedies so she released four patterns that like within that like a sock and a hat and a sweater and a shawl but all within that same theme and I really like that idea that's really neat and she has other videos as well outside of sort of the podcast where they're sort of just like chatting about a certain knitting topic like um budgeting or knitting on a budget if you have no money or just lots of different ideas and topics like that that are sort of they're definitely knitting related so she'll just sit and she chats about those and she's got a lovely voice and I love her aesthetic I guess she's she's uh, very nice to listen to so definitely one to check out as well number three on my list is Roxanne Richardson and now she showed up on like the videos I would check out if I'm practicing a new technique but she also fits in this category as well because she has her weekly casual Friday videos that are more podcast style she also does a technique Tuesday I think she slowed down publication of that uh, for now but where she dives deep into various techniques as well and like a recent one she did was like all about hats like the how to design and knit your own the different ways to work crown shaping um, keeping stitch patterns in the crown like she really dives deep into certain topics she did another series recently on like the different sweater shapes that was very interesting but her casual Friday is more of her podcast style where she talks about the projects that she's working on and she also shares like interesting what she calls knitting tidbits or news uh, where people share these bits of news with her and she shares them on her on her casual Friday video so she dives deep into lots of different things not even all knitting related like she recently did a fiber study where she she spins and she did a breed study where she would spin different uh, fibers from different sheep and then compare them and she made them all into diff like just small squares that she put into a blanket and um, in the past she's done like a sweaters through the decades I think starting in like maybe the 1890s I think might be the earliest one and she did a different sweater from each decade to like look at different you know pattern construction or sweater construction and the way patterns are written and that has got me thinking about doing something similar I would like to focus on sort of like color work sweaters and make it more geographical so that's definitely something I'm thinking about for the future it's just not not going to happen right this minute because I have a lot of other things going on but I'm thinking in the next year maybe I might start tackling that sort of a historical more geographical combination of the two focusing on color work sweaters um, but she's also now doing a, a historical sock study uh, looking at the history of the hand knit sock so she really dives deep into all of these topics and shares what she's learning in her casual Friday video so definitely something to check out if you like something a little it is a little outside like the just I don't know the knitting podcast you know where you'd like people will sit and show this is what I'm knitting this is what I'm gonna work on next this is what I finished this is what I bought there's a lot of that I have one of those every month as well um, but hers is definitely it sort of fits in there but not quite like she really dives deep into different topics and shares a lot of good information next on my list is the bakery bears now this is hosted by two people Dan and Kay a husband and wife team they're located in London not in London and somewhere in the UK and theirs is also more what I would call a variety show. They release like I think it's about a two hour episode every other week, maybe two, twice a month or every other week, sort of on that schedule and at that set schedule. Um, and it's really packed full. I would call this sort of like a knitting variety show as well. So they have like the normal podcasty things where they share like their projects that they're working on and um, what they finished and Kay also designed so she shares the things that she's designing. And along with all of the podcasty bits they also do a lot of what I would call the variety stuff like they in the past they have done like series on baking. Now Kay is doing a series on uh, dyeing yarn and then using that yarn to knit a blanket and she's done other yarn dyeing videos in the past as well and uh, Dan loves to like do walks with a lot of historical information like he did one on Hadrian's Wall and the one for this season is on different monasteries and I love that portion even my husband if he sees that part he'll sit down and watch that section he has no interest in watching knitting podcasts but he really likes watching that dance section on like the different historical things where he walks around these different areas they've 
he's got a drone on I mean all of the things to me like so you can see all of the beautiful landscape and the historical architecture and and things and shares lots of great information he's really great at telling uh, good stories and bringing the historical information to life I really enjoy watching those segments as well and lovely music his brother is a composer and has done the music for this season and it's just very lovely music as well so I definitely highly recommend theirs. It's also one when I'm ready, I've got like a two hour block or I might split this one up and watch just little sections of it. Uh, if I don't have a full two hours to sit and knit, then I will sit and watch that one in bits. But it's usually right at the top of my list when they post a new one that I know, okay, this weekend I've got that one to watch as well. Now another one that I've started watching is Engineering Knits. I'm not sure of her name, but she lives in the US and she does a lot of historical and vintage knitting. Sort of like she does uh, challenges, one that she did recently where she uh, blacked out all of the information about what the pattern was. She had a few different ones and then she sort of knit from instructions without knowing what she was knitting or different vintage patterns. So that one was really interesting. And she does lots of challenges like that or knitting just garments from vintage patterns and walking through her thought process and how the garment process goes and things like that. So now that I'm thinking about doing some of this uh, historical, geographical, sort of vintage, looking at vintage patterns, I started looking at more of those kind of channels and um, I really enjoy her videos. They're definitely worth checking out if you like like the vintage side of knitting or just seeing the, the change in the way knitting patterns have been written how they are now is definitely not how they used to be and I love that she explores those vintage patterns. Next on my list is Chem Knits. Now this is also another one that is not technically uh, about knitting at all. It's about dyeing yarn. But if you've ever thought about dyeing yarn for your own personal projects, her channel is definitely the one you want to check out. Now a good gateway for that is looking for her videos about dyeing with Kool-Aid or with food coloring. And let me tell you, this will let you know if you're interested in dyeing without having to buy a bunch of equipment that you're not going to use if you try it once and you don't really like it. But when you dye with Kool-Aid or with um, food coloring, then you can just use your normal kitchen appliances because, I mean, those are food grade items. So you can dye with them and then just wash out your pots and use them for your normal cooking. So it's a good way to find out if you like it or not. And her videos are really great. And she does lots of challenges to see how things are going to work. And she has no idea like what's going to happen. One that I loved recently was about doing yarn lasagna where she like sort of layers it in a pan, adding color as she goes. But she doesn't know what the outcome is going to be. She has probably a good idea, but this is why she tries these different things to see how they will act, how the yarn will take the dye and how how all of that process works. And now she does go a little more technical in some videos, which I really appreciate as well. She did one on doing, um, starting with like your three base colors and then using them at different amounts to create other colors. And that's something I definitely want to try. Now I have done some of this dyeing with Kool-Aid and food coloring and it was lots of fun. I really enjoyed it. So I have purchased some dye, went to the secondhand store and got a couple of pots and the dollar store for some tongs. I have not spent very much money, but because I know that I want to give this more of a try just for my own personal projects, I'm definitely not going to start dyeing yarn to sell maybe for some giveaways and stuff, but it's just for my own personal projects. I have some yarn that I am planning to dye probably sometime this summer or maybe in the fall for my own cardigan. And so I've been watching a lot of her videos to get some ideas and tips on how I can do that right from my own kitchen. Now, another recent one that I've started watching is Mel Makes Stuff. And hers is more of the podcast style where she goes into like the projects that she's working on and some sewing related stuff as well. But a lot of it is knitting. And I really appreciate her. Well, I like the projects she picks. They're usually very interesting and they're usually like more intricate. She likes a lot of texture and um, combining yarns and also a lot of color work and not like simple color work, like lots of colors. So uh, she talks about her different projects and um, the process she goes through to fit them for her figure. And I really appreciate hearing how she does that as well, because you can always take that information, even if the body shape is not the same and her definitely, she's definitely not my body shape. She's totally different. Um, but just to learn how she does that process, things that I can apply for my own projects as well too. So she really goes into a lot of detail about how she makes modifications and I would say she's a very experienced knitter and she chooses not simple projects she really chooses projects that are gonna stretch her her recent videos about uh, going to Knit City are really good about well, 
something that she's self-drafted for herself and that will show you like her level of skill she created this beautiful zipper zipper vest it's lovely it's really stunning and um she self-drafted that for her so it's not something she's going to release but she created her own uh, outfit basically she talked about the pants she created as well so she's got lots of great videos uh, you can dive through all of her videos and just see like the the things she chooses to knit but then how she makes modifications for them which is really interesting she does have a series too on color work knitting which I really enjoyed about how she chooses colors how she stores them even um, and that inspired me to like create a, a storage area for my own I'm starting to collect different yarn that would be appropriate for color work and I usually don't like to keep a stash of yarn I, I buy enough for my project and then like it will be used for other if there's leftovers it'll get used for other things and then I just don't collect it like I buy yarn when I need it but with color projects you want like all those little bits of color because you might need just a little bit of one you don't want to buy a full skein if you've got like a little in your color work collection that you can use so really good series um, I'll have links for everybody of course I mentioned that before but she's definitely one to check out now for another vintage knitting rabbit hole I would suggest Retro Claude Claude is a dress historian and a sewing teacher and she lives in the UK uh, and her videos mostly most of them are about sewing but she has a good variety on knitting as well usually like specific knitting patterns that she's working on their vintage patterns and then like I really enjoy her uh, stash busting series she's trying to clear out what yarn she has so she's doing a video a month showing like what yarn she's using and how she's using it up and all of that stash busting projects and but with a vintage knitting twist so her videos are really enjoyable now her schedule is more relaxed she deals with chronic illness so uh, she might go for a while without posting anything and then she'll have a spurt of energy I suppose and post quite a bit now there are two more that I put in this new to me category the first one is a green bean podcast and I remember watching this one ages ago and I really enjoyed it but for some reason it sort of fell off my radar but it popped up in my like my home feed again and I clicked on it and watched it and I remembered how much I enjoyed it now the host of this one is Katie and she's an illustrator but she shares her knitting as well and her sewing so more of the different craft type things very creative and she lives in South Wales in a national park I'm not going to try to say the name of the national park but so she does some of like sort of the vlogging style where showing the countryside and her walks and it's just very lovely and relaxing and she's very quiet and soft-spoken but she's just a delight to listen to when you want something that's more just quiet and thoughtful and just a oh, lovely scenery so I love to watch hers and of course she talks about her knitting as well and her sewing but I'm glad it popped up again because I remember watching it and I must not have subscribed but this time I made sure I hit that subscribe button so I would know when she was going to be posting again and she posts fairly regularly so definitely one to check out if you want something that's more relaxed and I also like she's an illustrator so a lot of her video content is about that as well but she's just very nice to listen to so just if you like the calm and quiet type then she's definitely one you should look into now the final one is another new to me podcaster earth tones girl she popped up in my feed and i figured let's give her a try i was bored and needed something new to watch and she was the perfect fit definitely more of the podcast style where she shows what she's working on which is usually a lot of socks and the, the episode i watched was also sharing some books as well and you know me if you're around here that i like to talk about my knitting books so i appreciated that so be sure to check her out as well and those are the podcasts that the new to me ones and the ones that i watch over over well over and over again sometimes and the ones I always go back to and I'm sure you have your favorites as well and I would love to hear about them so be sure to leave me a comment and tell me about your favorite podcasts to watch and if you're looking for new ones check out those comments to see what other knitters are recommending because they always have such great ideas to share and if you want to keep hanging out with me here's another knit and chat episode and you can click right there and I'll see you in the next video